um, this whole enterprise opened up and there was more diversity of participation, whether it's women or, or other people leading these companies, would we have different kinds of products? And you were mentioning social responsibility and a move toward that. What does this mean and what is women's view, if we want to put it that way, um, of social responsibility? I'm not sure you would have different prod um, So first, I think it is an advantage to have a technical background if you're building products. It's a huge advantage. It helps you be completely substantive all the time. And, and you know, you have a little bit of a more to prove sometimes, perhaps, because of your gender. I'm not positive. I, I actually haven't. I, I've felt pretty comfortable in every, you know, my business feelings. But, but I, it's nice to fall back on the technology. Uh, in terms of would you have different products, I'm, I, I don't know. I think it really depends on what your interest is and if your interest is not related to a social cause. I mean, that said, um, the company perhaps, I mean, a lot of companies today have a lot of social conscience, but we, you know, I know VMware does a lot of outside uh, social, um, you know, community, you know, we won the the harvest food drive for the whole year and, and thing, you know, things like that. But, uh, and so I certainly set a culture where that's very, very supported, but I'm, there's a lot of men that do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not, I think we have to be very careful in sort of creating sort of a, a handbook that if yeah. the rules, if you read it, you and get the end game. I'm asked by our CEOs all the time, is there a CEO handbook I can read, <laughs> men and women? And I say, I think it's in the same library as the venture capital handbook. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about, you know, pattern recognition. And one of the things that we have to be careful of as venture capitalists is to be open to new patterns. And otherwise, we don't make new investments. And realistically, we always have to invest only at these early rounds with the glass half full. And there are a certain set of people that make really crummy venture capitalists because they look at the same glass and see it half empty. Everything's uninvestable. And to us, we can't have everything be investable, but we, we start out with a lot of half full glasses where we do due diligence hoping that the market validates that we should, you know, invest in the rest of that glass. So I think it's very dangerous to try to, um, you know, give sort of a manual or ingredients for success here because each industry is very different. We've talked a lot about the technology industry here. Um, I do think that there was sort of, you know, the same business class that I was in. Over 50% of the class is women today at that same university. The same math majors, that's not 50%, but it's not one. So, you know, there's a dramatic change. I think there, that took a long time, but it's not fast enough. And the thing that, you know, I ask people like Diane is, you know, and I even ask people like Bill Gates, who spends a lot of time at universities, is why aren't more women inspired? To, to pick at least some of the, to knock off some of the easy ones, get the technical great degrees, either mathematics, which I did, computer science, electrical engineering, you know, it's not going to be adequate in our industry for most women unless other circumstances arise to be a undergraduate business major and, and lead these companies from the beginning. There are some, you know, examples, certainly Heidi was a, um, English major and uh, and it, creative journalism at that um, and was an outlier here, uh, but that is very, very rare. Mm -hmm. So I think the bigger question is, you know, that the question I put on myself is, you know, how can we play a role or maybe we're not very inspirational, how do we find better inspirational, you know, you know, bright shiny things to hang in front of women to say, you know, hey, you know, that boring math degree that, you know, it's, it's going to really pay off or that computer science degree. And it sounds like, uh, you know, um, MIT is making great strides. And I, uh, my partner, Mark Gorenberg, is on the Board of Governors there. So, and, and Diane is a big contributor there to make sure that happens. 
but I would really caution you to, you know, to get over prescriptive on this because there is not a prescription. Right. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, so um, your your so that was your first question, but your mm -hmm. second had to do with you know how what is the impact of women in, in yeah. starting businesses? And I, I think there are some interesting opportunities today. And I just was I, I'm um, working with. Um, a woman who's starting a company that um, it turns out, you know, there women, you know, make a lot of the buying decisions in um, in 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 the household and just in the economy in general for for homes. And so, how, how what are the business opportunities that surround that? And so she is pursuing something related to you know local service providers. And um, but I think you know, so she has a keen. Um, you know, insight into her customer base, and so there. I think there are some business opportunities in in the web space and the services space that that I think women are uniquely maybe positioned to understand better and and pursue. So, there's there's another thing that we haven't talked about here, and that is we talked about education, we talked about experience, but the other is persistence, and it turns out that most male entrepreneurs start their businesses sometime in their mid-30s when they have experience and they have, but they've stayed in the workforce. And there is a huge problem with the leaky pipeline of actually very well-educated women. In fact, the better educated, the more likely to actually leave the workforce at some point. And they not only leave their position in the corporate world, but they leave their opportunity to actually become really credible, high potential entrepreneurs. So that's just another piece, and it relates to while you're doing the experience building, you have to keep at it. Yes. Uh, I wanted to get back to the question, or, or a set of questions around, uh, and your comment about control, but also about the power of learning through failure. Because what the research shows is that people judge more harshly um, women's failures than they do men's. And so I'm wondering if you can each give examples of where women have failed and come back. Because the sense behind the research on women don't ask is one of the reasons that women don't ask is because once they ask, you know, they often don't get what they ask for because of the perceptions, the implicit bias, the sense that, um, well, I, you know, I, I tried that once with a woman and it didn't work, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, and I think there is a sense that the penalty for failure for women is a lot higher than the penalty for failure for men. And I didn't know if that played out in your experience or not. I just, I don't, just don't have enough data points of women um, in, the, in the entrepreneurship world. I don't know if you have more. Well, I mean, you know, that we can go back to Heidi again because she is a well-known Stanford grad. Um, Heidi built a successful software company, Teammaker, which was acquired by Deluxe Corporation in Minneapolis for quite a nice sum of money. She went on to work for Apple um, for a short time and um, then actually um, joined a venture capital firm, Mobius, and the entire firm is gone. There is no Mobius. It's, it's you know, the, it, they did not raise another fund. Um, you know, the, some of the partners retired, some of the partners went off and did other things, but effectively it failed to continue as a fund. Um, you know, certainly there's, you know, uh, Heidi could have said, gee, I, I want to be a venture capitalist again, but instead she said, hey, you know what, that was interesting and I really enjoyed that and, um, you know, I'm going to be an entrepreneur again, so she started a new company, you know, and that could have, be a, could have been a big blowout failure. I failed as a venture capitalist, you know, but what is failure here? They had some very successful companies. Um, some of the successful companies, Heidi was associated, some she was not. But it, it, I think it really is sort of the definition of failure as we see it in Silicon Valley, other than a few big blowouts here. They're sort of more like, you know, scrapes and bruises. Um, and you see them on people for a while, and they heal, and they move on. So we're, you know, it, it, you know, that's one of the reasons that I'm here versus Minneapolis. So, you know, we built an ecosystem that, you know, is okay with near-death injuries. Uh, you know, 
but it, it is true. I, I guess, you know, I've been out of Minneapolis. I've been here for 22 years now. So, you know, the, and when you go, go meet European entrepreneurs, it is even more extreme uh, for entrepreneurs in general and probably then for women if this whole, you know, theory holds uh, because you don't, scrapes and bruises, let alone near-death experiences, are not exactly considered a route to learning as they are here. So I think from from my perspective, we're, we're out of the marketplace of, you know, where scrapes and bruises. And, and that's something women can learn here is that it's okay to have, you know, to knock out a tooth and get a cap <laughs> every once in a while. We have uh, just one question over here, and then we're going to have to wrap it up. Thanks. This is our last question. Thanks. Um, yeah, regarding your comment about women dropping out at some point in their career, and, and Anne's comment regarding the inspiration for more young women going into technology, you know, there's some wonderful programs in the schools for encouraging women to go into science, engineering, and math. But when you look at the statistics in Silicon Valley, which is our you know, more progressive community in this country, and you look at the, for example, the Mercury, San Jose Mercury study recently that said in the last five, I think it was five years, the percentage of women that have increased in high-level positions, C-level positions, and on boards has stayed the same. It's sort of hard to encourage those young women because what do they have to look forward to? I mean, we have some great role models here, and we have a few great role models. But, you know, I've got a, uh, a nine-year-old niece, and I've been trying to encourage her to go into science and engineering for technology, but why wouldn't she go into medicine or someplace where she has great role models and there's better opportunity where she's going to, or that we've already broken through and seen some successes instead of continuing on with these, this fight. Well, sure, we, you know, certainly we're here because we have a passion for technology, but for young women coming up, it's difficult for them to look ahead in their future and say, well, what do I really have to look forward to? Did anyone want to answer that? <laughs> well, I, I actually think Silicon Valley is doing fairly well. I mean, um, you know, Meg Whitman's been a fabulous CEO, and Carol Bartz, and and then there's COOs at Facebook and and Yahoo, um, and so I think women are, you know, you're seeing a lot of executive women starting in Silicon Valley. Certainly have a long way to go, but the the thing is, when you're choosing your career, you're coming through college. Um, Hopefully, you get very passionate about whatever it is you're going to study, and um, it, it's. I think that that's going to be the biggest predictor of your success. And so, choosing it. Um, I mean, certainly, role models are helpful, but uh, you know, I think biotech, life sciences is a pretty darn exciting area right now. So I would, you know, I think I can see why a lot of women are going into it. And in addition, they have role models, but. Um, but hopefully, you know, <laughs> it, it's certainly um, the, the informa information IT's lost to not have women. You know, we're missing half the workforce. But um, I, people shouldn't go into it if they're not really, really <laughs> excited about it. Yeah. You know, it is interesting because I think you know the, the you know the popular culture. You know, the CSI series on television has made science interesting, not maybe IT, but science interesting yeah. to a lot of young women because, you know, it, it's the biggest challenge for our industry is people don't actually, when you're, they're young,